What's up YouTube, Jeff back again from DopeTechDaily.com. Today I'm bringing you guys my 72 hour impressions on the Google Pixel and the Pixel XL. And also I wanna do some follow up on the camera problems video that I posted a while ago. So I'm just gonna jump right in because I wanna to get to this. Um, now first of all, a lot of people have been asking me about those camera issues that I posted. So we'll get right into that first. Now the issues I posted pointed out were a couple things that were going on with the camera in terms of lens flare and also a halo effect. I posted a couple pictures which illustrated the halo effect. You guys saw this one here with the halo at the bottom. And then I also posted this picture here which has this sort of lens flare here at the top. Now I took quite a few other pictures with my other pixels because I told you guys this was only on one of my pixel devices when I initially made the video. But I've taken quite a few other pictures and I've noticed it now on quite a few of my other devices as well. You can see this one right here. There's a nice halo here at the bottom that I took in this restaurant the other day. So this isn't specific to just one device. I went back and noticed it in some other pictures I had taken, it just wasn't as drastic. I took a couple more test shots to confirm that it does in fact happen, pretty much regardless um, of the device that I'm using. All three of my pixels have this issue. Now there are some things that you can do to mitigate this effect. One thing I found yesterday while playing around with a camera is if you do cup your hand around the top here, of the camera, then you can mitigate and actually completely get rid of the halo effect or the lens flare. So you have to cup it so that your hand's not in the shot, so it's not ideal, but it is something that you can do. The problem appears to be if you have an ambient light source that's sort of on the side and you're taking the picture of a darker subject matter, that is when you get that sort of lens flare or even the haloing at the bottom. So if you're using the camera and you happen to take a photo and you notice that, Try putting this over the top like a little hood. One thing I want to test, as I mentioned last time, I'm wondering if it's because the camera is completely flush with the glass back here. I'm going to try to put a skin on here. Maybe Slick Wraps will send me one. Shout out to them if they're watching this video. So I can test and see if you can get rid of that glare. Perhaps that'll mitigate the issue as well. Also, if you have a case that has a very, very recessed camera module, that might help as well. Now the case I've been using is the Spigen case here. I think this is the Tough Armor or the Slim Armor. It's not recessed quite enough, so I don't think that this acts as an effective lens hood, but perhaps the OtterBox cases are some of the ones that have a more recessed hood for the actual camera module. That might also mitigate the problem. So is this a deal breaker with the camera? I would say absolutely not. This is just one piece of the puzzle. Google has actually acknowledged the issue. Uh, Fandroid and uh, Chris Chavez, he posted a video, they did an article, and they got a response from Google. I never could, so they never responded to me. But they said they're aware of the issue and they're gonna try to fix it in a software update. That's a little weird to me because this certainly seems like a hardware issue, especially because making a little lens hood with your hand fixes the issue. But that's all I'm gonna say about it for now. I will say the camera is very, very good. Otherwise, I would say it's very comparable to the S7 Edge. Um, and in terms of overall photo quality, I did a video on the V20 yesterday. I think the Pixel camera does compare better in overall photo quality um, than the V20. So I'll try to do a one-on-one. -on -one. Again, I'm reviewing a bunch of phones right now, so I'm alternating between them. So it's tough, you guys gotta bear with me, trying to give my best effort. Uh, the next thing I wanna talk about is the overall performance, and that I have nothing but positive things to say about it. I love Android 7.1. Um, everything about this phone is incredibly snappy. The animations, sliding up the app drawer, opening apps, everything is just beautifully smooth, and I've had no lag on this phone at all. I love everything about the software. Google Assistant's been very effective. Uh, you know, it's an evolving thing, the Google Assistant, uh, but it has been very effective for me overall in terms of answering the questions that I'm interested in, movie times, weather, etc., and being very conversational. We know that's gonna improve with Google's knowledge graph adding to that over time. So no complaints on the software, definitely the best software and overall smoothness experience from a standpoint of just navigating the UI every day. Uh, that's the best experience I've had on an Android phone ever. I still wanna do that speed test against the iPhone. I am getting to that, I promise, very, very soon. Uh, the next thing is the display. So the display is one place where I had a little bit of a complaint. You guys noticed yesterday in my V20 video, I had a little complaint about the V20 display being a little too cool. The color profile on the Pixel seems to be fine for the most part. My main complaint with this display is it just doesn't get bright enough outside. Now this isn't a AMOLED display, and we usually expect very bright displays from Samsung with their AMOLED panels. And of course this was sourced from Samsung by Google and HTC who made the phone. 
but Samsung usually reserves their brightest displays for their own phones. And this phone, I just haven't found the brightness. Even if I turn it up, you guys can see here in the actual video there, you can see the brightness, I'll turn it back down so it's not too drastic. But even if you turn it way up when you're outside, it doesn't give you that extra brightness boost like you get on the S7 Edge. Overall, the viewing angles are very good, which you would expect on AMOLED display, uh, but the brightness is really too low for me here in the Phoenix sunlight. The LG V20 with its LCD display actually appears brighter. I was comparing them earlier today when I was using the phone in the sun. Now that's not a deal breaker. It's just something I want to mention because people do expect super bright displays with AMOLED. Uh, the next thing is the battery life. Now I've been using this phone uh, since last night. I used it overnight. I didn't even charge it last night. It's been on standby for a while because again, I've been sort of rotating, working with both phones. Uh, but this particular phone has given me great battery life. I post some screenshots of my overall performance when I was on Twitter the other day when I used the Pixel for a full day. And as you can see, the screen isn't even taking up the majority right now. It's got about an hour screen on time and I've got 64% left, but it's been on for a long period of time. It's been on overnight, one day and 16 hours there um, of usage. So that's very, very impressive. The standby time is great. And also the screen on time, if you're using this thing full time, is very impressive as well. It's able to get about five hours, just over five hours screen on time with the Pixel XL. The smaller Pixel hasn't been as good. I've got about three hours, three hours and 15 minutes screen on time, but the standby time in Android 7.1 is fantastic. Really enjoying that in terms of the battery life. Uh, a lot of people asked me in the V20 video about call quality, so I'll mention that with the Pixel. I always forget because I don't, you know, people just don't make calls with their phone as much. I don't anyway, I know some people do. I've gotten great call quality. I've used it with Verizon. I've used it with T-Mobile. I've used it with AT&T, and I've used it with Project Fi, my various Pixel units. I've gotten great coverage here in Phoenix on all of them. Call quality has been comparable to my S7 Edge and comparable to the V20 when I've been using it on T-Mobile. I haven't had any issues with call quality whatsoever. Uh, a few other things, the speaker on here isn't really that great, um, which perhaps you would expect. It's not really the biggest deal in the world. So you got this single bottom firing speaker down here. And you know, that's not the biggest deal, but it is something worth pointing out. The speaker is not the loudest. Uh, it's pretty clear, but definitely not the loudest speaker you're gonna find on an Android phone. So if you're looking for that great audio experience for media. Fingerprint scanner, as I mentioned, fantastic, super fast, very accurate overall. The build quality, I like, still like it. That slight taper, which allowed them to make the camera module flush. It also gives you nice ergonomics when you're holding it in the hand, and that's definitely something I appreciate. Uh, I do think that I do really miss uh, having water, water resistance, because even in Arizona, I, we don't get a lot of rain here, but if I'm near a pool or something, that's sort of something I have to worry about, or if I'm near a faucet, I'm a little more careful with this phone. So that's a minor complaint, not a huge issue. Uh, and it would have been nice to have wireless charging, but also that is also not a huge issue for me at the end of the day. Uh, I have noticed in terms of overall shooting video with this phone, I'm gonna try to post a uh, vlog with this phone, be using the main camera. The audio is lacking a little bit, so if you guys check out uh, Danny Winget's uh, video, he shot a video where he actually did some video on the Pixel. The audio is not quite loud or clear when shooting video on the Pixel. In my experience so far, I'll do a little more testing. Not as clear as I would like. I find the audio and the video overall a little bit better on the V20. So the V20 does have those nice manual controls, so perhaps that's expected. I'll do a little more comparison. Uh, overall though, I'm pretty impressed with this phone. The performance, it's definitely a performance beast. It's a battery beast. So if you care about performance, you care about battery, this is the phone to go to. Uh, I'm not ready to call this the best camera of the year. I know a lot of people have. I still wanna compare it more to the S7 Edge, which I still consider to be the best camera. Obviously, Google says they're gonna push out some fix to the lens flare, the halo issue. If they do, uh, that would of course be fantastic. And then that would quell one of my main complaints about the still photo camera, still a few things about the audio in terms of shooting video on here. But the performance on this camera overall is just great. Uh, the, the pictures in low light look great and also the smoothest Android phone that I've used to date. So I think if you want a phone and those are the important things to you, you definitely can't go wrong with the Pixel or the Pixel XL. A couple of people have asked me which of the two sizes I prefer. I like the 5.5 inch phone, five inches, though it feels nice for a while. I like to have this for the media. Uh, it's just the right size for me, but you gotta check that out for yourself. All right guys, so I think 
that's about it in terms of my overall impressions, the things I wanted to say about the camera. If people have any other questions they want to know about this particular phone, I'll go in depth with the Google Assistant and the camera a little bit more in some future comparisons. Uh, you guys can find me at dopetechdaily.com, Google+, Twitter, and Instagram at the links in the description. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy my content so I can make future videos like this. I really appreciate you guys checking out the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.